Welcome mathematicians to today's video on parallel and perpendicular lines. We'll be looking at visually comparing linear equations to see if indeed they are parallel or perpendicular. But a starting point, you can see on the screen at the moment we have two lines here. The blue one is y equals 2x plus 5 and the red one on the left hand side graph is y equals 2x plus 2. They are running parallel to one another. This is a symbol that we quite often use as a shortcut for parallel. And on the right hand side we've got y equals 2x plus 2, the red graph and y equals a negative a half x plus 2, and that's the blue graph, and they're running perpendicular to one another. So by definition, parallel lines are two lines that always have the same distance apart and they never touch. So you can see here the blue and the black line are exactly the same distance away from each other and they never intersect. Let's now have a look at this on the Desmos calculator. Using the Desmos calculator, let's now examine five linear equations with the same gradient. Our first one is y equals 2x plus 2. So we have a gradient of 2 and also a y-intercept of 2. Our second one is y equals 2x. So we have a gradient of 2 and intercept of 0 because there is nothing at the end that's plus of 0. So that makes sense. It's got a y-intercept of 0. The next one is y equals 2x take 2, the same gradient with a y-intercept of negative 2, which you can see on the graph. The next one is y equals 2x take 4, same gradient of 2, but we have an intercept of negative 4. And finally, y equals 2x plus 4. Now each one of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lines has identical gradients of 2. The only difference between these 5 linear equations is the movement up and down the y-axis. Okay, let's compare the results that we just viewed. We have here the first graph in red of y equals 2x plus 2. That means we have a gradient of 2 and an intersect point at 2. We can add to that y equals 2x and y equals 2x take 2, y equals 2x take 4, y equals 2x plus 4. Each one of these lines has exactly the same gradient. They're only being moved up and down the y-axis, being translated vertically. And that's because one's got two added onto it. The red one is moved from the origin up to. The blue one is moved down from the origin down to, negative two. The green one down four, and the purple one up four. This black one is like effectively plus zero, so that stays exactly at the origin. So you'll see that every one of these equations has exactly the same gradient. So our finding is all parallel lines have the same gradient. And we can see there the gradient of 2 in this case. Let's finish off our summary of parallel lines. We've already described it as lines that have the same distance apart. Equation 1, in this example, y equals x plus 2. Equation 2, y equals x plus 4. Equation 1 and 2 are parallel as they have the same gradient. That is a gradient of 1. So these two equations are parallel as they have the same gradient. Let's now have a look at some examples for you to try. Which of the following lines are parallel to the line with the equation y equals 4x plus 2? So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. I want you to compare. Okay, let's have a look at the solutions. So we start off with y equals 3x take 4 as our first comparison. We want to see, is this a parallel line to our original line of y equals 4x plus 2? So straight away, we can see this has a gradient of 3. The original line had a gradient in red of 4. Our new line here has a gradient of 3 in purple. Gradients are different. The lines are not parallel. Moving on to our second example, y equals 4x plus 5. The original line had a gradient of 4 in red. The new line has a gradient of 4 in purple. These gradients are the same, so these lines are parallel. Our third example, x equals y takes 6 over 2. It's been rearranged to look a little bit more confusing, but let's simplify this. We want to get this equation into a format of y equals mx plus c, the traditional linear equation. So first of all, let's multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of this divide by 2. Next, we want to get y by itself. At the moment, it's got take 6 or minus 6. Let's add 6 to both sides. Yes, so we end up with now 2x plus 6 equals y. We can rearrange that to y equals 2x plus 6. Now we can compare the gradients. The original line had a gradient of 4, and our new line has a gradient of 2. These gradients are different, so these two lines are not parallel. Now a final example. x equals y plus 4 over 4. So first of all, we want to get y by itself, so it's in its normal format of y equals mx plus c. Let's multiply the 4 on both sides to cancel that on the right and transfer it to the left. So I have 4x equals y plus 4. Let's now get rid of this plus 4 by subtracting 4 on both sides. That gives me 4x take 4 equals y, which I can just rewrite as y equals 4x take 4. Now we've got it in the standard y equals mx plus c format, and we can see clearly that it has a gradient of 4. So the original line's gradient was 4, and this new line that I'm comparing it against has a gradient of 4 also. The gradients are the same, so both these lines are parallel. Now let's look at these on the Desmos calculator. 
Using the Desmos calculator, I've plotted the linear equation y equals 4x plus 2, and here it is. It goes through the intercept of 2, and it's got a gradient of 4. Now let's compare the four other linear equations to see if they're parallel or not. So the first one was y equals 3x take 4. Clearly these two lines are not parallel, and if we were to extend this out, we see they intersect. So by definition, y equals 4x plus 2 and y equals 3x take 4 are not parallel lines. The second one we investigated was y equals 4x plus 5, and we determined that was parallel to y equals 4x plus 2 because the gradient is 4 in both cases. So here's the visual representation of that. Both lines are parallel to one another, and it doesn't matter how far we extend that out, they do not intersect, they do not cross over at all. Then we then looked at the more complicated looking linear equation of x equals y takes 6 over 2. When we graph that, you can see clearly these two lines, the red and the purple, are not parallel, and in fact they intersect. So we know those two lines are not parallel. And finally we looked at our last linear relationship, which is x equals y plus 4 over 4. When we graph that, we see that the red and the black line are indeed parallel, and it doesn't matter how far we take that out, they are parallel and they will never intersect. This is a nice way to compare our results using the Desmos calculator. Let's now consider perpendicular lines. By definition, perpendicular lines are two lines that meet or intersect each other at right angles, that is 90 degrees. So we can see here these two lines, the red and the blue, intersect at 90 degrees. Let's now look at some examples using the Desmos calculator. I have the linear equation y equals 2x plus 2. It's got a gradient of 2 and a y-intercept of 2. Now, let me plot on that y equals negative half x. Clearly that's a nice right angle, that's perpendicular. And that's because the gradient of 2 in the first equation multiplied by the gradient of negative a half gives me negative 1. This meets the criteria for perpendicular lines. A second one, y equals negative a half x, the same gradient as the previous, minus 2 means that my original equation of y equals 2x plus 2 and this equation of y equals negative a half x take 2 are going to be perpendicular to one another. Let's have a look at our next one. y equals negative a half x plus 2. Exactly the same gradient because it's a negative a half like the other previous two graphs. And it's perpendicular because the product of the original line's gradient 2 and that of negative a half comes out to negative 1. It meets the criteria for perpendicular lines. And it's been pushed from the origin up to because of the plus 2 on the end. Our second last example, y equals negative a half x take 4. It's got the same negative a half gradient, so it will be perpendicular. And take 4 means it will be dropping down 4 units down the y-axis, and the intercept will be minus 4. And finally, y equals negative a half x plus 4. It's the same as this y equals negative a half x, but it's been located 4 units above the origin. So it has the gradient of negative a half, which when I multiply it with 2 also gives me negative 1. So it meets the criteria for perpendicular. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lines that are all perpendicular to y equals 2x plus 2 on the criteria of their gradients of negative a half multiply with the 2 to give me negative 1. So let's summarize these. We have a red line, y equals 2x plus 2. We have our second line, y equals negative a half x. Our third line, the blue one, of y equals negative a half x take 2. Our fourth line, y equals a negative a half x plus 2. y equals negative a half x take 4 as our green. And finally, y equals a negative a half x plus 4. Each one of these five lines is perpendicular to our original y equals 2x plus 2. Our finding is all the perpendicular lines have the same gradient. However, the gradient of the perpendicular lines is different to that of the original line. How is the original gradient, m1 of 2, related to the perpendicular gradients of m2 equals negative a half? Let's look at the summary. We've already discussed the perpendicular lines are two lines that meet or intersect each other at right angles. Two perpendicular lines with the gradients m1 and m2 will satisfy the following rule. When you multiply their two gradients together, it has to come out to negative 1. Or is written as m2 is equal to the negative reciprocal of m1, meaning it's equal to negative 1 over m1 m2 can be described as a negative reciprocal of m1. Let's make some sense of this. So I have two equations here, equation 1 and equation 2. y is equal to 2x plus 2, and y is equal to negative a half x plus 4. So the gradient in the first equation was a 2, and the gradient in the second equation was negative a half. When I multiply those two together, I get 2 times negative a half equals negative 1. This holds true for the rule we just stated. So therefore, the two equations stated here, y equals 2x plus 2 and y equals negative a half x plus 4, 
are indeed perpendicular to one another. Some examples of other pairs of gradients that would be perpendicular to one another. I hope you pick up the pattern. So if my first gradient was 3 and my second gradient was negative 1 on 3, when I multiply them together, I get a negative 1. Those two gradients would be perpendicular to one another. If my first gradient was 5 and my second gradient was negative 1 on 5, times them together, I end up with negative 1 again. They're perpendicular. If my gradient 1 was 8 and my second gradient was negative 1 on 8, they would multiply together to give me negative 1 again. Those two gradients in equations would be perpendicular. And finally, if my first gradient was 2 on 3 and my second gradient was negative 3 on 2, this is the reciprocal of the first, when I multiply them together, I get a product of negative 1, and they too would be perpendicular. Finally, let's have a look at some examples of perpendicular line comparisons. Which of the following lines are perpendicular to the line with the equation y equals 4x plus 2? So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 linear equations. Our first example, y equals a half x, take 4. So the gradient of this particular linear equation is a half. The original line equation, the original line had a gradient of 4, and my new comparison line has a gradient of a half. When I multiply them together, half of 4 is 2, that does not equal negative 1, so these lines are not perpendicular. Let's move on to our second equation, y equals a negative quarter x plus 5. This equation has a gradient of negative 1 quarter. The original line had a gradient of 4, the new comparison line has a gradient of negative 1 quarter, when I multiply 4 and negative 1 quarter together, I do get negative 1. So these lines are classified as perpendicular. Our third example, x is equal to y plus 4 over 4. Now this is hard to compare, it's not in our traditional y equals mx plus c format. So let's transpose this. I'm going to get rid of this divide by 4 on the right hand side by multiplying both sides by 4. I'm now going to get rid of my plus 4 on the right hand side by taking 4 on both the right and left hand side. And that leaves me with the equation y equals 4x take 4. Now we can compare the gradients. So the original line had a gradient of 4 in red. The new line that we're comparing it against has a gradient of 4 in purple. When I multiply those two together, 4 by 4 is 16. That does not equal negative 1. So these lines are not perpendicular. My final example, x equals negative 4y plus 8. I want to get rid of this plus 8 first of all, so I'll take it from both sides. So x take 8 equals negative 4y. I now want to get y by itself, so it's multiplied by negative 4. Let's divide both sides by negative 4. So I end up with y equals x take 8 over negative 4. Let's separate these two factors. So the x divided by negative 4 will be equal to negative a quarter x, and the negative 8 divided by negative 4 is the same as plus 2. I've now got this in the y equals mx plus c format, and I can compare my gradients. I see the original line had a gradient of 4, and my new line has a gradient of negative 1 quarter. When I multiply those two together, 4 times negative 1 quarter does in fact give me negative 1, so these two lines are perpendicular. Let's now look at our four comparison lines using the Desmos calculator. So we started with the y equals 4x plus 2 as our first reference line, and here it is being graphed. It's got a gradient of 4 and an intercept point of 2. What we wish to do was then check four individual lines to see if they were in fact perpendicular. So the first one was y equals a half x take 4. This is not perpendicular. It comes in at some angle. It does intersect, but it is not a perpendicular line. Moving on to our second example. We've got y equals negative 1 quarter x plus 5. Okay, that should be perpendicular, and in fact it is. And there's our blue line of negative 1 quarter x plus 5, and it is indeed perpendicular to the y equals 4x plus 2. Moving on to our third comparison. This equation is x equals y plus 4 over 4. Now we had to transpose that to rearrange it into its normal format to find that the gradient was in fact 4. Identical gradients will be parallel lines like we were investigating earlier in this video. Finally, our last linear relationship was x equals negative 4y plus 8. That was transposed to find the equation of y equals a negative a quarter x plus 2. So these two linear equations will also be perpendicular. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's explained a little bit more about parallel lines and perpendicular lines, how we can pick them, how we can compare them, and how we can visualize them. If you've enjoyed this video and learned something from it, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.